All right, we are about to do our final lesson together of uh, your third grade math curriculum. So uh, we're going to do some word problems involving perimeter today. Uh, so really, again, uh, like we've talked about, no new learning with this. It is using what you already know about perimeter and using what you already know about solving word problems and just combining those two things and doing them uh, at the same time. So let's uh, take a look at the worksheet for today. All right. Rosie draws a square with a perimeter of 36 inches. What is the side length or what are the side lengths of the square? So, oh, my pencil broke. Let me get another one. All right, here we go. We'll draw a square. And I know that to go, you know, if I start there and I go all the way around, my perimeter equals 36 inches. So I need to figure out all the sides are the same, like four times four sides times what length equals 36 inches. So if I have four sides and they're all the same length and I multiply those two numbers together, I'll get 36. Well, we know that 36 divided by four is nine. So the answer is nine inches. And I could label nine inches on each side. Since it told us a square, I really could only do one and that we, we could imply that the rest were, um, were also nine inches. All right, let's move on to number two. That one was pretty straightforward. There was a one step thing. All you had to understand is that a square had equal sides. That's basically what that problem is asking you to do. Uh, Judith uses craft sticks to make two. I'm gonna, look at that, that word's gonna be important. I already know. Two 24 inch by 12 inch rectangles. What is the total perimeter of the two rectangles total? This is a problem where if you don't read it carefully, you're gonna look at just the numbers here. 24 and 12, and you're going to make that, um, you're going to find the perimeter of that rectangle, and you're going to only get a half way because you're only going to make um, the perimeter of one of the two rectangles. So let's draw two rectangles that are the same size. And we have 24 and 12. All right. So that's just to show you that we have to, but from here on, I'm gonna say 24 plus 24, and then 12 plus 12 is also 24, right? The 12 and the 12 equals that third 24. Four, four, four is 12, two, four, six, seven, 72 inches. Now that's one rectangle. I looked at the camera halfway through spelling the word and forgot where I was is 72 inches. So two rectangles then, 72 plus 72 is 144 inches. Two rectangles equals 144 inches. So again, the math in that, the addition here, not terribly complicated. The hardest part of this problem is understanding there are two rectangles and you're finding the area of, or I'm sorry, the total perimeter, not the area, um, that you're adding the two perimeters together. Uh, the next one, an architect draws a square and a rectangle is shown below to represent a house that has a garage. So house here, garage here. What's the total perimeter of the house with the attached garage? So we just have to use some basic uh, properties of, um, of geometry here, knowing our shapes and what um, the properties of each shape to figure out the sides that are missing. So if that's, this is a square, the garage. So if that's 30, this is 30, and this is 30. If this is 55, then the opposite side is 55, because that's a rectangle. We know rectangles have opposite sides with the same uh, length. Now the last and most challenging part is to figure out what this little vertical part is over here. So if from here to here is 40, so if I drew this over, it would be 40 feet. This only goes to 30. So the difference between 30 and 40 is 10. So that missing section is 10 feet. So now I can just add these up. 55 plus 55. I'm gonna put a, I saw Wyatt do this the other day and he puts a check mark or crosses each one out when he uses it, which is really a great way to do it. Zero, 110, 
Then I'm going to add 40 to that. That's 150. Then I'm going to add 30, 30, 30, which is 90. I'm going to check off all three of those. Actually, I can add the 10 in there and make it 100. That makes it way easier. Shoot 150 plus 100 is 250 feet. So again, just being systematic, going through and checking things off, making sure you get every part. The biggest thing that we see on a problem like this is somebody will miss that link. They'll just forget to include it all together, or they'll forget to include this link right here. So make sure that you have checked every outside surface of the shape that you were trying to find the perimeter for. Um, that's one of those things where it's important to go back and double check after you're done and make sure you've done it, done the entire problem. All right, here we go. We're getting a little bit more complicated as we go with these. Manny draws three rectangular, uh, sorry, three regular pentagons. So regular meaning regular. So all sides the same length are equal. Um, so he creates a shape. The perimeter of one pentagon is 45 inches. So one pentagon. So think to yourself, why do they give us that information? It's a regular pentagon and the perimeter is 45 inches. Well, they do that because that way we can figure out what each side is. So 45 inches divided by five sides is nine inches. So each side is nine inches. So we can go around and just label them. And then we count up how many there are. So I'll start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have eleven sides that are exposed to the outside. Eleven uh, exterior parts to this that I need to measure. So eleven times nine inches equals ninety-nine inches. So again, the multiplication. Eleven stacks are quite simple. The multiplication wasn't difficult here. It was understanding why they gave us this information in the problem and what to do with it once we had it. And understanding what a regular uh, polygon is, a regular pentagon, meaning that all of the sides are the same length. Johnny used uh, two inch square tiles to make squares as shown below. What is the perimeter of Johnny's square? So two, two, two. So I'll say that this is all six which means this is six, this is six, and this is six, right? Each side is really six. So six times four equals 24 inches. That one's probably the most straightforward one other than the first one on the whole, um, on the whole worksheet. So you just have to know that that's two, this is two, that's two, they're all the same, two, four, six. And then since it's a square, um, each side is the same and you can just multiply by four. Lisa tapes three seven by nine inch pieces of construction paper together to make a happy birthday sign for her mom. She uses a piece of ribbon that is 144 inches long to make a border around the outside edges of the sign. How much ribbon is left over? That is an interesting problem. This is a little different than any that we've done so far. So we're gonna have to find the perimeter and then find the difference between 144 and the perimeter that we find. So let's go seven, Seven opposite sides of a rectangle are the same. Nine, 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 nine. So I have six times nine and I have two times seven. I'm getting those from, I have six nines and I have two sevens. Six times nine is 54 and two times seven is 14. I can now add those together and get uh, 68. So the perimeter equals 68. But she has ribbon that equals 144. So we need to find the difference. So difference is subtraction. So 144, the total ribbon she has, minus the amount she uses. So we're, we're cutting off some, we're taking away some. Minus 68. Um, if I have four, I can't give you eight. So I need to go over here, make that a three, make this a 14. 14 minus eight is six. Now I have three, so I can't give you six. So I need to go to the hundreds, cross that out. Move 10 tens over here, 13 minus six or 130 minus 60 is 70. So 76 inches are left over. 
which tells me she actually could do the same exact thing. She can make two signs and still have some left over because 76 is more than 68. They didn't ask us that, but it's an interesting observation that I made. All right, so again, not, none of that is new learning. None, nothing we did there is uh, new. It's just applying what we know in a different way. So we, are, we know how to solve word problems. We know how to read them carefully. We know how to double check our work, look for keywords in them, um, highlight or circle or box in parts that are really important. And we know a lot about perimeter and shapes and geometry. So now we're just bringing all of that together and uh, using all that information to solve uh, problems. So uh, you guys have been doing a phenomenal job this year. I'm really proud of you. Uh, you've done a great job of math and everything else. Um, and um, keep working hard because you are doing a good job. So let's finish out the year strong.